it appears that there is clearly an issue and everyone's ha having their own experiences of it. Um, but there, 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 are, there are organizations surely that both um, at local and global, national, global levels that are doing great work in this space. So can you tell me a bit more about your interactions with some of those, it could be teams themselves, for example, that are actually leading the way when it comes to uh, having an anti-racism action plan? Um, maybe, maybe Kash, if you can, uh, you can continue. Yeah, sure. I think um, obviously there's uh, a lot of governing bodies that are trying to support. There's organisations out there, such as Football for Peace, such as Frank Talks About Hurts, but also Sporting Equals who are who are leading the charge in this. But what it, what it's doing is empowering um, the local football clubs. I mean, look for for example, I've been in the professional environment from a professional football club. A professional football club, unfortunately, in the lower leagues have not got time to look at issues like this. They all the resources they have. The focus is literally on a cash flow to get by on the weekend to to see what they do. Grassroots community uh, foundations uh, are majority of times not even connected to the professional club. I think Arsenal is one of the few where actually the football club and the foundation are working hand in hand. And I think there's a huge gap between community work and elite football. And <clears throat> from a fan's perspective, for example. I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done, for example, in there. But, there, but to answer your question, there are clubs that are really taking action towards this. And I, I think the local crisis, the reaction from the football world collectively, the EFL, for example, uh, are good examples of what can be done if a collective voice is brought forward. All right. Uh, Aisha, uh, would you like to add anything from, from your own experiences of working with various organisations? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's very interesting and, and, and this is nice and this is why, you know, I bond with uh, Cash um, because, uh, you, you know, Cash and uh, many others, they speak from a point of view of their club, their setting or their association. Uh, I'm a former a, a, a football federation president and I was uh, the first uh, female in my country and and, you know, one of a few female in the entire world to head a federation. Now I'm in FIFA. As a governing body, we depend on people like cash and on other member associations to ensure that discrimination on all levels, be it race, be it gender, be it violence, be it every other thing. You know, football is a unifier. And it speaks one language and one language alone. And that is the love of football, the passion, which is universal. You don't have to speak Spanish or understand Argentinian or English or French to understand football. It's one, 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 one language. OK, so, um, uh, uh, you know, I would say that from FIFA's point of view, we rely so heavily on people like Cash and other federations to give us the feedback as to how they are tackling discrimination. Again, I'm sorry if I don't dwell on too much on race, because for me, like I said earlier on, discrimination is discrimination, whether it's skin color, it's gender, it's ethnic, it's political. It is all about segregation, making you feel that you are a lesser. You cannot compete. You do not belong. You shouldn't be here and you're suppressed. And, 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 and that for me is, you know, it's, it's discrimination, full stop, and it should not be allowed. So to sit here and just talk about racial discrimination, I'm not able to do that in isolation, and I should, but I, I, I can't, because um, I, I, am, I am a victim of gender discrimination, political discrimination, and um, not ethnic, but, you, you know, even my, my country, Sierra Leone, if you, you, you think about one of the most brutal wars in, in, in modern history in, in Sierra Leone, it was born out of ethnic um, uh, discrimination, really. You know, same country, but uh, one, one ethnic group fighting the other, you know, for no reason whatsoever. Mm. So uh, to, to, to come back to, to, to this point, football is the language that everybody understands. Football is a unifier where everybody can actually factions can drop their arms and stop fighting stop arguing stop discriminating and come together for one for one language and one sport and one 
passion alone, which is football. So um, I, I don't know whether that answers. A, a, sure. Yeah. A, thank you. A, a question. But, yeah. But, thank but you. That's really, yeah. No, no, of course. Of course. Fran, um, you've also worked at various organizations and um, I'm wondering what inspiring case studies you may have come across or experiences you may have come across of organizations at a grassroots level or even at, at the, the more establishment levels that are doing great work in a, to, to, to clamp down on any kinds of discrimination? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. And really kind of picking up a little bit on what Cash said in terms of the foundations that are often attached to clubs, they don't get much limelight. We work in partnership with many of the trusts and foundations that attach to Premier League football clubs, Premiership rugby clubs and, and the clubs of all sorts of other sports. And I think a lot of people don't know that they're even there, to be honest, and don't know how they're funded and don't know how uh, the kind of work they do. Um, I've had the privilege of getting to know many of these foundations and uh, many of them are charities in their own right, as Cash quite rightly pointed out. Some of them are sort of connected the club but a lot of them are almost quite independent but they get the privilege of using the badge of the club which they can use to help promote their good work but the one thing that unites them all is the incredible amount of good work that they do out in their communities um, and um, I've seen all sorts of programs from homeless homelessness to um, saving young children that are in really difficult situations up to actually looking after the elderly in the community and they are generally very community-based programs that do a lot of good work and um, so there are a huge amount of inspiring stories there but I think a lot of the time those stories maybe aren't told enough and um, aren't really embraced enough by the sporting clubs that actually should really be going wow you know look at these amazing organizations that we have attached to us and what they're doing for the communities that fundamentally those sports clubs serve. Thank you. Well, you see, racism obviously is a problem, not just within football or across sports, um, but uh, very, I mean, it's, it's, is it difficult, do you think, for organisations to be held accountable for their actions? Um, accountable meaning not just how racist they are, but also how anti-racist they are. So people can have an understanding of, of um, their position and their action on this. So, uh, Kashif, what, 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 is, what are your thoughts on this? I think uh, most recently you've seen the reaction from the sporting world um, on certain topics and agendas. I feel that when when there is a big event that takes place, um, there's a wave of current support. However, however, I feel that that needs to be flipped because it shouldn't be a reaction in a moment. I think we need to be a lot more proactive on the sports world and this needs to be ongoing. Um, and that's something that I feel needs to be challenged and sporting organizations, football clubs, community foundations, all of them have got a, a, <clears throat> a right, um, uh, sorry, a role to play in, the, in this scenario. And I think, yes, they should be challenged. And I also think that they should be held for account for um, situations in which they're not proactively looked at. 